again, another Unreal Engine tutorial for you. The last few episodes, we've been building our enemies and we've given them a bunch of script to work with, but they're not doing anything. So far, we've programmed it so that we can do things to them, like scan their health and shoot them and kill them and all that sort of stuff. But they're not doing anything to us. To make that happen, for them to come after us, we need to incorporate some artificial intelligence or AI. AI gets really complicated. In this episode alone, I'm going to have to introduce you to five different blueprints that you haven't worked with before, at least in this tutorial series. Let's get started in this episode. Come down to blueprints in your content folder, right click and create a new folder. We're going to call this AI. Inside this AI folder, we're going to right click and create a new blueprint class. And that blueprint class is going to be type in controller. And you can see here, AI controller. Now, because we've typed in controller, you can also see player controller here. So a player controller is basically the interface that's used so that you can talk to the character. When you press a button, that goes through the player controller to there. Likewise, the AI controller is for our NPCs and our enemies. So select AI controller, and we're going to call this AI underscore. For now, we'll just call it enemy. And we'll pop into that. It's one of those scripts that's just going to have a script right here. So you don't have to worry about the viewport too much except that we're going to need to add a component. That component is going to be AI perception, this guy right here. So AI perception is exactly what it sounds like. It's the perception of the AI. It is essentially how the AI is going to see. And over here in this tab here, we need to select what sense we want it to use. You'll see here that we have damage, hearing, prediction, what we want to start with is sight, and then we'll compile and save that. So that's the first step. If we imagine our enemy, this guy here at the bottom of the hierarchical structure, the next step above that is our enemy AI controller. But then above that, what does the enemy AI controller talk to? Because that's not gonna house all the script. The next step above is going to be a behavior tree. Let's right click up to artificial intelligence and select behavior tree. We'll call this BT underscore enemy. A behavior tree essentially is going to be the brain or the logic center of what our enemy does. This is how it makes decisions. So this is going to be filled with all of those decisions. And we're going to come back to that later on because before we even get into that, if we click on this drop down for the behavior tree, you can see there's a blackboard asset that it's asking for. Back over to the test map. Let's right click, scroll up to artificial intelligence and select a blackboard. We'll call this BB underscore enemy. The blackboard is going to store the variables. So the AI controller is going to update the blackboard's variables and then the behavior tree is going to make decisions based on those variables. Let's go over to BT underscore enemy. We'll hit the drop down and select BB underscore enemy and save that. And those are the first three that we need to deal with. They will work in tangent throughout the entire game, making decisions such as, can I see the player? And when I see the player, what do I do? And when I don't see the player, what do I do then? But that's going to come a bit later down the line because this is going to get complicated really fast if we move too quickly. Next up, we're going to come over to volumes over here in the top left. And I don't know why I can't see these, but we'll just drag over there. We're looking for a nav mesh bounds volume. I want you to drag a nav mesh bounds volume in here. And we're going to make it essentially the size of our map here. Down here in brush settings, I prefer not to use scale. I'm just going to center it up at zero and zero and then expand this over here. 
And you'll notice that as I expand it, it's going to say building navigation. So essentially what this is, is a field in which the game engine will determine a space for a potential AI character to move. For example, here, if we were to fire a script off now, this AI character would be able to work within the bounds of this mesh because these guys are outside of that field, they wouldn't be able to move. So this is essentially a playground for your enemy. And we'll make the height about 500, which means we'll set the height to 250 because we don't need any space underneath. So 250 will bring it up to about floor level. There we go. Next up, let's go to AI underscore enemy and let's type in behavior. We'll get a run behavior tree. So this is the first thing that we want our AI controller to do. And if we hit the drop down, we can see BT underscore enemy. Realistically, you would probably have different behavior trees for different enemies if you wanted them to act differently. So this is specifically for tutorial purposes. We might create a separate one later on down the line if we get to a point where we want to create different enemy types. But for now, let's just get the first one up and running. And then I like to also put a branch underneath here just to make sure that it's absolutely running. Let's get rid of the event tick. We're not going to need that. Let's compile and save that over to the test map. Let's go down to enemies, open up B underscore enemy underscore base down here under pawn where it says AI controller class, we will select AI underscore enemy. So now we have our pawn, this character right here, this enemy talking to our AI controller. Now AI controller running a behavior tree and that behavior tree running to the blackboard. So far, so good. Once we've got that running, we enter the behavior tree. The behavior tree has two things we can come out of the node with. There's sequences and selectors. Let's grab ourselves a sequence. A sequence is, as it might explain itself, a sequence of events. So if we wanted three events to always happen in order, say the enemy plays an animation, then moves, then shoots when they see us, and that would be a sequence. But the difference between that sequence and the other sequence would be a selector. Let's start with a sequence for now, because I want to show you the next blueprint that we need to understand to make behavior trees work. Let's drag out and click on this little drop down. These are tasks. So right now we could get a wait task. Now this isn't actually going to do anything. It's just going to make the AI wait. The wait task is one of the pre-built in tasks into Unreal. What we'll use now is place sound. Just to make sure everything's up and running. Now a sequence will repeat itself. So once we've played the sound and we wait, then we're going to go back and play the sound again after the appointed five seconds, which is set here. Also of important note is if I hover over this number, this is the order of events that will happen. So zero will come from the root down to the sequence. The sequence will then play the sound and wait and repeat over and over again. So let's just get a sound happening. We'll pick collapse because we're already using explosion. So now that sound should play for all the enemies using that AI. Let's save pop over to the test map, save all, and hit play. And you can hear that sound playing. And every five seconds, the sound is going to play. And the closer I walk, the louder it gets. And then when I'm in the group of enemies, obviously I'm surrounded by the sound. So our AI tree is working, but obviously we're going to do more than just play a sound or the things that are otherwise listed here in tasks. So our fifth blueprint is a custom task. If we go over to test into the AI folder and right click and create a new blueprint class and type in task, you'll see here BT task blueprint base. We can select this and we will call this anything we want. For now, let's go T underscore test. We will open this up. So let's type in event execute receive AI. This is essentially our begin play once this task has been triggered. And all we're going to do is print string task working. So this is essentially where we would put all of our custom script, play this animation, play this sound, 
do this particular thing, all the way down to shooting the enemy, reloading the enemy's weapon. Everything would come down to a custom task. So this is essentially the end of the pipeline. One important thing, unlike our functions, functions don't necessarily need a return node, but tasks absolutely do. You cannot move on from a task without a return node. Here it's called finish execute. And you'll notice there was finish abort there as well in case you had to abort the task. So let's put a tick there for success. If we don't tick that, it's not gonna move on to the next task. So let's compile and save that. Back over to the behavior tree, we will drag off that sequence and we will see t-test sitting right there. So let's copy our wait over again. So now the sound is going to play followed by a wait then the test task will play followed by another wait. So we should be seeing that print string and the sequence will repeat over and over again. So let's save that over into the editor, hit play. Three, four, five, print string comes up. Three, four, five, sound plays and our blueprint is working. And we have four enemies on the map and it's coming up four times. So that's all good and ready to go. We're going to leave it there for this episode. I know it might seem a little bit bare bones, but trust me, this stuff's going to get really complicated really fast. So let's leave it there. And in the next episode, we'll add some more complexity to this AI.